Howdy ho, Winslows. My name is Dara. This is Dara Hallmark. This is a space where we nerd and we geek out over all things Hallmark Channel movies, TV shows, and stuff. And we are talking. Tis the season to be merry. I was like, let me put this pillow in the video. <laughs> what is this movie about if you haven't seen it? Mary Griffin is a relationship expert needing to, um, so she has this book about a fiance that she doesn't have and her editor and publisher, th well not her editor, her publisher, um, thinks that it's real. So she goes, she's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So she goes away with her editor best friend to her home in Vermont. Her publisher finds her and be like, sis, what's, what's the word? Because you said that your fiance is real, but he isn't. And she's like, no, it isn't. Um, and so the publisher is just like, well, what are we to do? It seems like we're in between a rock and a snowflake. So what are we going to do? And so throughout the course of the movie, Mary gets inspired by people, by events, by activities. And then she finds that in, in all of life, like there really are no rules for love. That's her thing. She's a stickler. There are supposed to be rules, guidelines. Like um, it reminds me of the woman from Advice to Love By, a teach, where you know how she comes from science. This one comes by like rules. You got to do this and this and this and have your list. And she's like, chuck the list. You don't need all that. Follow your heart. Um, You know who's in this movie? Rachel Lee Cook and Travis Van Winkle. And you know who made this movie? <laughs> Rachel Lee Cook and Travis Van Winkle. My God on today. <laughs> um, This movie was brilliant. The two of my favorite scenes off the jump. When, um, so her editor best friend Darlene has this ex named James, who was the son of the owner of the diner, right? James comes back into town and it looks like James is filling your girl Mary. And who peeps that? But Darlene's big brother, Adam. Travis Van Winkle. And so Adam peeps it. He's like, oh, oh, we need to stop this. And, um... <laughs> He's much like, uh, what is it? Um, Alex in Gingerbread Miracle, that moment where he realizes that Jacques is, um, trying to go to the gingerbread games or whatever they're called with, um, Merritt Patterson's character. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to be there too. That same moment happens within this movie with Adam and, uh, Jay between Adam, James, Mary, and Darlene. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be there too. Loved that. Loved the conversation that they had when they walked out and how quick and fast paced it was. You guys. <laughs> the campfire scene. <laughs> Y'all, you want to know why I'm so excited? It's not because I had Blackberry Cobbler for the first time. No. It's because this movie gave me what I wanted and what a way to what a way to go out. What a way to go out. My gosh. Travis Van Winkle and Rachel Lee Cook are pros, professionals. They're gold members of Hallmark. I'm just platinum members if you ask me. I'm just like well, teach us then, senseis. Teach us. <laughs> we had one master class uh, last week with the Dickens of a Holiday. And, um, or was, yeah, and now we, we, we got another master class. Um, I loved it. Oh, the Kim, oh, gosh, again. <laughs> I don't want to touch because I'm getting burnt. It was just, it was just, it was just. It was just like, it behooves you to watch this movie. I know you are burned out from the 80 movies that we've had between Up, GAC, Lifetime, and Hallmark. I know, but I don't care. You need to watch this one. You need to watch this one. I was sitting there eating my cobbler just like 
are we not going to talk about Karen and Lena White? <sighs> Treasure. Treasure. That is what you are. Is that how the song goes? I forget. Um, but yo, Karen Melina White, I loved her, her little kindling of a romance with the owner of the dinner, James Fuzzer. I liked that. I liked that a lot. I liked that a lot. I did. Um, I'm trying to think what I would, is this a program movie? <laughs> I think so. I'm genuinely trying to think, is there anything I would change? I don't think so. I am I biased because I like this pairing was bomb and they gave a bomb performance, maybe. Um, am I biased because I was probably slightly on a sugar high, maybe, but I care if not. This movie is still worth watching. And um, Adam's character kind of reminded me of David from It Was Always You in a way and that he's always gallivanting around the world and it's like needing someone to to ground him and make him feel at home. But like he was ready for that. And that's what I liked about his character. He was ready for it. Okay, if I were to change anything, this is just me nitpicking. I would have wanted to see him do just a smidge more in terms of like him fighting for Mary from J for James, you know, or from James, whatever. But that's just me being nitpicky. Y'all, what a way to go out. What a way to go out. Oh my gosh. Mary, what a way to go out. What a way to go out. How many times am I going to say that? I don't know. <laughs> Because Sugar Bomb Twist didn't do it for your girl. I'm sorry. I um I tried to watch. I watched about 65 to 70% of it. And then I stopped it right at the part where the principal choreographer found um, our leading lady teaching the other young lady. Like she was recording her in the theater, like doing her Latin twist on the Sugar Plum Fairy. And then there was that conflict because she was using the theater when she wasn't supposed to. And then she blamed Mateo, which by the way, I love the name Mateo. But okay, okay, I guess this is like a quick fire review of Sugar Plum Twist. That romance was so unnecessary and it felt so forced. And I, for real, like, this movie could have been good on its own, even without the romance between our um, Natalia and Mateo. We didn't need that at all. And sidebar, I've been saying this since In the Heights. I need an abuelita to adopt me. I, the, if anything, that movie, I watched Sugar Plum Twist right after, um, what is that? Christmas Dance Reunion with uh, Le Corbin Bleu and Monique Coleman. So I was in a dancing mood. It reminded me of my days of old <laughs> because I I studied ballroom in college. Oh, I miss it so much. I miss ballroom so much. It just made me miss dance so much. Which by the way, Christmas Dance Reunion review is uh, coming. That will be in another video. But um, yeah, I mean, Getting back to Tis the Season to be Merry. Tis the Season to be Merry indeed. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I don't think I spoiled anything. Um, it's one of those, you know, writers going back to a home. Like it has some kind of like typical Hallmark tropes, but it, 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 it gave me like the that warm Christmas feel that I want in my movies. So I really like this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know what else to say, my friends and Romans. Um, well, uh, I have some more Lifetime movies to look at, but other than that, 
Merry Christmas! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video to know my th if this is your first time watching me welcome and if you want to see any more reviews that I have you're like wait why is there only like three reviews from the Christmas movies on this channel that's because I've been splitting my reviews between YouTube and podcasting so you can find reviews for like Nantucket Noel, Boyfriends of Christmas Past, um Christmas CEO, um, and some others. They are on the podcast, which there is a link to it in the description box. And follow your homework on Instagram because it's kind of fun over there. Like, I post up songs and stuff, and there's like moody Christmas stories and stuff. And there's a video up there of my mother, so. You know, if you want to go and check that out, I'll be at there, you know, for your leisure or whatever. So, yep. <laughs> oh, yes. You guys, thank you again. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.